sitting here with uh, Dave Lambert from <coughs> Fire, who uh, opted to uh, do some reunion shows back in uh, 2007. Angel Air has released uh, one of the gigs. Uh, it features some narration from your manager, apparently. Um, yeah. Yes, what, a picture did, of the time. I, there's, I don't think there's any on the live album because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's on here talking actually. I think there's a little bit of narration. It must be a, a small. Yeah. Bit. Oh, that's right. In, in between one, in, in one of the tracks, there is. Yeah. He actually told the story during the show. Yeah. Uh, but there wasn't time on the CD gotcha. to, to carry that. So. And um, how much longer would the CD have been if, uh, if oh, you had that? Oh, quite a bit longer. Gotcha. About, about two and a half hours. And would he um, ever join you back in the day on stage? No, no. Okay. In fact, this is the first time the uh, Shoemaker have been played gotcha. in its entirety. Yeah. And um, how much preparation did you guys put into to the show? A lot. We started the year before. I and, see. Uh, we met initially every month. Gotcha. And then started to meet twice, then three times, then four times, and then it was uh, sort of twice a week. Were you were you good buddies with those guys over the years, or was it more of a case of hey, we got a band together, let's do some reunion shows because people like it? Um, not to get you to you know, not to seeking the dirt or anything. Just curious if it was. Well, I, I was unaware uh -huh. until somebody brought it to my attention how Father's Day, his dad in particular, uh -huh. had, had taken the imagination of people uh -huh. and was being cited as an influence by quite a few people, uh -huh. um, uh, like uh, Noel Gallagher, not Noel Gallagher, Liam Gallagher. Mm -hmm. Cited and people like that, and I thought, well, I'll have to look into this. So right. I started to to uh, look it through on the web and uh, realised that there was an interest in, in the band and in the Shoemaker album, mm -hmm. particularly in, in Asia, strangely enough. Southeast Asia is where the, uh, the main, main interest was. Did some gig offers come in from, from, from that point? Um, we, we were asked to go to Japan, but it was just on, it wasn't viable. Gotcha. Because the drummer, um, Bob, who is actually my best friend, mm -hmm. um, since we were 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. um, he's extremely busy and he's in the uh, agency. I see. With comedians, actually. Gotcha. Yeah. Funny enough, right? Yes. <laughs> so, um, had the, it, what, it's called overhead? Is it uh, under her? Underground and overhead. Okay, underground. Yeah. Now, that's a lot of demo material, if I'm right. right. Had that come out before the, the, the reunion and, and yeah. that interest? Yeah. And, and what sort of, inspired that that release coming out? That was purely a, a phone call from a record company asking if they could do it and mm -hmm. they said they would do all the work. I see. Which I was very grateful for because I just had to provide them with um, whatever tapes I had. I see, I see. And they, they took the whole thing and processed it. Gotcha. And, uh, that was a very generous deal they gave me there and it, I was really pleased that that came out. And how did you come across uh, Angel Air for the uh, Magic Shoemaker Live? Um, I was, I think, I think it was Paul Brett told me to to have a word with them mm -hmm. before we before we actually did the thing uh -huh. uh, because they would be an ideal label for for that. And I spoke to Peter at Angel Air and he he was delighted to, to take it on board because he already had the the cut the, the uh, yeah gotcha the other one before and um, so you guys were getting together every month. I take it you had everything else going on in your schedule with the Straubs and, yeah. and other things that you do yeah. It went. Uh, it, it was quite difficult at times, right up until the uh, the night before the first show, mm -hmm. the first fire show. I was playing a couple of hundred miles away with straws on, gotcha. on a show. So uh, yeah, it got tight right to the very end. I see. But maybe that took my mind off it a bit as well. It was quite nice. Is this something you guys will ever do again, or that's it? I don't think so. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob uh, now lives in Spain, although he still. He still runs his agency uh -huh. from London. He's actually based in Spain now, so gotcha. it's, get, it's getting increasingly difficult to uh, right. to do anything. I'd love to do something again. But, uh, uh -huh. We did actually play in the the Straub's 40th anniversary okay. um, concerts uh, that we did in Twickenham. And, and what year was that? Uh, that was two, 2009. Okay. Yeah. Now the um, the, the band uh, Fire was not your first band, you'd had a couple of other things that you had done before uh, that? Only at school. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fire was my first pro, pro band, but uh, originally called Friday's Child. I see. And it, and I assume that the drummer Bob had been in that band as yeah, well? Yeah. So you guys were a team? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it, was, it was already set, yeah. Now, you guys are cited as a psychedelic um, 
UK psychedelic band. Yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much where it's pigeon pigeonholed. Yeah, but it, it, it seems like there are some songs that are that are that way. Like the like my father's name is Dad and and the B side to that. But some of the other tunes seem seem to be more of a straightforward like kind of an easier rock type thing. Um, yeah, I mean some people have even um, cited it as early punk. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff and when. I dismissed that when I first yeah. heard it, but then when I went back to listen to the old stuff again, I thought I, I could see what they meant. I had kind of an attitude that yeah. uh, I didn't quite realise that I had at the time. Gotcha. Just a young guy. Uh -huh. you know, uh, did you want to be in the uh, lead singer position, or did that just kind of default to you? Uh, it defaulted to me, yeah. yeah but, uh, when we first formed the band, mm -hmm. it was a four piece with a singer. I see. And he was great, except he couldn't sing. Gotcha. <laughs> that would have been really bad. That would that could have so, been that could have really had the band yeah. side of this punk rock. <laughs> what, what did you think about punk rock when it came along? Were you even paying attention to any of it? Uh, no, I was a bit disappointed to be okay. honest. I, I I got quite excited mm -hmm. when it first appeared because mm -hmm. I thought this is gonna this is going somewhere, and it, and it didn't. Right. Didn't Did the musical sound of, of what you were hearing, maybe, what were you hearing? Were you hearing The Clash or The Sex Pistols or yeah, The Ramones? Yeah. Did yeah. you like any of the music itself or? Uh, some of the stuff. I, I liked a couple of the, um, uh, uh, the Pistols things. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we're so... We're yeah, hard. exactly. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, vacant. Yeah, yeah, pretty vacant. Yeah. 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 But... Um, so you were kind of hoping for maybe a change in how the, 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 the business of, of music worked yeah. as well? Yeah, I thought everything, I thought it was going to be a revolution, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. It was just, uh, it was a kind of a fashion yeah. thing, which was a bit of a shame. Really. Yeah, it, and it, it got co-opted <coughs> pretty quick, I, I it think. It did, yeah. It got, it got mainstream almost immediately yeah. by the fashion people and um, the media. What, what kind of, just out of curiosity, what kind of a hope did it, did it give you specifically? Well, I thought it was going to slow wipe things clean mm -hmm. and uh, so we could start a new slate and build with the knowledge that we already had, you know, the usual thing of uh, right. um, the master, uh, the, the pupil exceeding the master, if gotcha. you, know, you know, as, as you always hope is going to happen. But it didn't seem to happen. It cleared the decks and it cleared the, the slate, but it didn't replace it with anything. Mm -hmm. it just, didn't have anything more than that to offer. Did it do anything to band, bands like the Straub, do you think? I mean, were any of your fans leaving, or was it maybe oh. preventing people from getting into the, the band or hurting opportunities? Yeah, it, it, it's, it started to, to uh, prevent anybody trying to progress mm -hmm. in gotcha. any other field of music, mm -hmm. because everybody just wanted punk, you know. And that was a late, from a label point of view? Yeah, yeah, Chaz and I had some material that we, um, we put together, and uh, yeah, and I were very interested, mm -hmm. but it just got overshadowed by all the punk stuff. Gotcha. You know. And then, uh, I guess what Hudson and Ford had left the band and actually did their own punk rock band. They at did, that one yeah. Point. They did the Monks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and good for them. They, yeah. they kind of found a way. Yeah, they kind of found a way around that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I think this kind of wraps it up. I just wanted to do a you know a short yeah. little thing on fire. Yeah. I, you know, I That's haven't great. really seen any interviews or anything, and no. I figured you know. Let's, the CD came out, so why not talk about it? Yeah. Cool, I appreciate Great. you sitting down and uh, chatting. My pleasure. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you very much.